In this video, we will be reviewing over simple machines. Now, a simple machine is a mechanical device that changes the direction or the magnitude of a force. And so, in general, they can be defined as the simplest mechanism that uses mechanical advantage or leverage to multiply force. Now, there are six classically um, identified simple machines, and those include levers, wheel and axle, pulley, incline plane, wedge, and screw. And as I go through how to approach solving uh, simple machine problems as they deal with physics, you're going to see an overlap of efficiency, work input, work output, mechanical advantage, and force. So um, as we approach the solution of physics problems with simple mach machines, it's really a hodgepodge of types of problems that may show up. Now here we have our first simple machine problem. We have a machine that applies a force of 100 newtons over a distance of 10 meters to raise a 500 newton drum 1.5 meters. We have four problems that we need to solve for. Uh, we need to identify the work input. We need to determine the mechanical advantage of the machine. We need to determine what is the work output, and we need to determine what is the efficiency of the machine. So here's a classic example of a hodgepodge of asking uh, several different types of uh, questions concerning the simple machine. So let's begin with A. Uh, what is the work input? Now in order to solve the work input, the first thing we need to know is the formula. And work input equals the effort force times the effort distance. And in this case, our effort force is 100 newtons, and our effort distance is 10 meters. And so when we do the math, we would get 1,000 newton meters as our uh, work input. Now the second problem is asking what is the mechanical advantage of the machine? And mechanical advantage equals the resistant force divided by the effort force. And so as we solve this problem, we see that we have a resistant force of 500 newtons and we have an effort force of 100 newtons and that was stated up in the problem. And when we do the math, we get a mechanical advantage of 5. Moving on, the next question uh, we're asked to solve for is, what is the work output? Now, work output equals our resistant force times our resistant distance. And so when we do this problem, and let's just change that to a different color, let it stand out better, we see that um, our resistant force is 500 newtons. Our resistant distance is 1.5 meters. And so when we do the math, we have 750 newton meters as our work output. Finally, we are asked to determine the efficiency of the machine. And the efficiency of the machine is determined by taking the work output divided by the work input and multiplying that times 100. And efficiency is a percentage. So if we take our work output, which we calculated in uh, part C, and we divide that by our work input, which we calculated in part A. We're going to multiply that times 100, and we will get an efficiency of 75%. Now, no machine can have an efficiency greater than 100, because you can never get more out of the machine than what you put in. Now here we have a problem where we have a machine that exerts a 250 newton force to lift a 1250 newton object and we're asked to calculate the mechanical advantage. Remember that mechanical advantage equals the resistant force divided by the 
effort force. Now when we look at our problem, because our object weighs 1250 newtons, that is our resistance. And the effort that we're putting in to raise the object, which is 250 newtons, that's our effort force. And so when we do our math, we get a mechanical advantage of 5. In this problem, we have a 4 meter inclined plane and it's used to lift a heavy container into a railroad car and the car is 1.5 meters above the platform, we're asked to calculate the mechanical advantage using the inclined plane. Now not all mechanical advantage problems have the formula mechanical advantage equals resistant force divided by effort force. When we deal with the mechanical advantage of inclined planes, we use a different formula. And the formula we use is mechanical advantage equals the length divided by the height. So in this problem, we have 4 meters as our length, and we see that the railroad car was 1.5 meters above the platform, and so the 1.5 meters is going to be our height. And when we do our math, we get 2.66, which rounds up to 3, so we have a mechanical advantage of 3. Now in this problem, we have a lever as our simple machine, and the lever is 10 meters long. The stationary component, known as the fulcrum, is located 4 meters from one end uh, on which a 3,000 newton weight rests. How much effort must be applied to the other end of the lever to raise the weight? When we do these type of problems, it's always good to draw a diagram. And so when we look at our diagram, we see that the entire length of our lever is 10 meters. And we saw that uh, we had a mass that was 3,000 newtons was 4 meters from our fulcrum. And our fulcrum is right here. So that if we take our 10 meters minus our 4 meters, we can see that the distance from where we're applying the effort to the fulcrum is our 6 meters. And so we need to apply a force right here and use that to raise the, uh, the weight. And so the way we do this is very simple. We're going to take our distance, which is our 4 meters, times that mass, which is 3,000 newtons, and that's going to equal our distance, which is 6 meters, times our unknown effort force. And what we do here is simple algebraic, and we solve for x, and so we will find that uh, we would need an effort of 2,000 newtons. Now I do want to also point out that that uh, while my example already had the uh, diagram drawn, many times these problems do not have uh, the uh, situation drawn out. And so it is always helpful for you to do a uh, diagram of your problem. And that's one thing that's going to hold true in many of your physics problems is to diagram out what's going on in the physics problem. In this problem, we're dealing with a wheelbarrow, and a wheelbarrow is classified as a second class uh, lever. Here we have the wheelbarrow carrying a load of cement, and it weighs 500 newtons. It has a center of gravity in the load that's 0.5 meters from the wheel. And so you'll see that we have that drawn out right here as being that 0.5 distance. You can see our mass right here is drawn in as our 500 uh, newtons. And then you'll see from the problem the handle is 2 meters long from the wheel. And so we have that drawn in as the 2 meters. And so what we're asked to find is how much effort would be needed by an individual right here in order to lift the uh, wheelbarrow. And when we solve these problems, it's very similar to the previous problem. We're going to take our distance, which was 0.5 meters. We're going to multiply that times the mass that we had, which was 500 newtons. 
Now that's going to equal that total length that we have, which was 2 meters, times the effort the person would need in order to raise the wheelbarrow. We do simple algebraic, we solve for x, and we find out that we would need an effort of 125 newtons in order to raise the wheelbarrow. In this problem, we have an inclined plane, and we want to move a rolling load weighing 600 newtons up an inclined plane, which is 90 centimeters long and 30 centimeters high. We want to know how much effort would be needed to pull that load up the inclined plane. Again, a diagram is always very helpful, so you'll see that I've already drawn out that the length of my inclined plane is 90 centimeters. My height of my inclined plane is right there is 30 centimeters. I've got my mass as 600 newtons. We solve it very similar to the others. We're going to take our height, which is 30 centimeters. We're going to multiply that times the mass of the load, which is 600 newtons. That's going to equal our length, which is 90 centimeters, times the effort needed to roll that uh, load up the inclined plane. Simple algebraic. We solve for x and we get we would need 2 newton meters in order to roll this load up the inclined plane. Now let's look at efficiency in a little bit more detail. Although a machine can be used to multiply force, it cannot multiply the work. And so our efficiency of a machine can never be over 100%. And that's because we're always going to lose some part of that um, section of work that's put into the machine as friction or as heat energy. So one of the formulas we can use for efficiency is going to be our work output divided by our work input times 100. And we saw that on previous problems. However, we don't always have the work output and work input given for us. So another formula we can use for efficiency is to take the weight of the object multiply that times the height through which uh, the object is lifted, divide that by the effort force that is applied to the machine, times the, the distance that the effort force acts. So let's see how we can use this formula to solve a physics problem. Now here we have a little bit more complicated efficiency problem. We have a crate is pulled two meters with a constant velocity along an incline and it makes an angle of 15 degrees with the horizontal. The coefficient of friction between the crate and the plane is 0 0.160. We need to calculate the efficiency that is achieved in this process. So what we want to do is we want to go through and identify what's been given and what we need to solve for. In this case we're being asked to solve for efficiency so that's our unknown. We are given our coefficient of friction as 0.160 we're given our angle theta as 15 degrees. We're given our uh, change in our distance as being 2 meters. We know that our efficiency is our work output divided by work input. Another way to calculate work output is to take our resistant force times our change in height divided by our effort force times our change in distance. And that change in distance is the distance that that effort force here uh, moves. Now to calculate our coefficient of friction, the formula of coefficient of friction is placed right here. And uh, this right here is the symbol for coefficient of friction. Here we have our resistant force cosine theta. Now this right here is the force applied along the inclined plane and that's going to equal our resistant force times our sine of our angle theta. So as we approach the solution of this problem, the first thing we want to do is we want to find our work output. And so in our uh, problem, the crate is going to be our resistant force. And so that is going to be represented by resistant force here. The change in height is going to be the distance that the crate is lifted. And so we're going to have to tweak that a little bit 
and so we would see that our resistant force uh, times the distance that the applied force uh, is moved times sine theta would give us our work output. Now in order to find the work input, the applied force is going to be the sum of the force of friction and the force uh, of the inclined plane. So here we're going to have our um, applied force and remember this is the distance that the applied force is moved and that's going to equal our force of friction times the force of the inclined plane all multiplied times the change in distance that our applied force moved. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put our formula for coefficient of friction and our formula for calculating uh, the force of the inclined plane on this next section. And so right here, this is the formula for coefficient of friction. And so we have our coefficient of friction times our resistant force times the cosine of theta. And that's the standard formula for coefficient of friction. We're going to add that to the resistant force times the sine of theta in order to calculate the force along which the inclined plane moves. And all of that is going to be multiplied times the uh, change in distance that the applied force moves through. Now we're going to combine uh, A and B because we know efficiency is the work output divided by the work input. And so we're going to take our work output formula and we're going to apply that right across here. We're going to take our work input, we're going to apply that right across there. And one of the things we do with physics is we cancel out where we can. And so you're going to see that right here we can cancel out our um, resistant force and right here we can cancel out our uh, distance that the uh, applied force moved so that we get a simplified formula as right here in order to calculate the efficiency we would take the sine of theta uh, over the coefficient of friction times cosine of theta plus sine of theta so if you will remember from our previous slide our angle was 15, so we take the sine of 15 degrees divided by our coefficient of friction, which was stated in our problem, and that's on the previous slide, times the cosine of our angle, which was 15, plus our sine of 15. We do the math, and we would have an efficiency right here of 0.63.